Tom here from Lawrence Systems, and we're gonna talk about the Unify Doorbell. I think this is a really cool lineup in terms of the, if you already have the other Protect systems, this is one more piece to add. It's treated like a regular camera, but it has a few other enhanced features because the other Unify cameras have a microphone. This has a microphone, but this also has the ability to talk back to people. So we're gonna do a little review of this device, share my thoughts on it, and talk about the total price not what this device costs. And what I mean by that is what it takes to get this set up. It's not a standalone device. So if you came here wondering if it was, sorry, it's not. It does require a system that runs Unify Protect. So I'll be talking in the beginning here about the total cost of ownership. But first, if you could take a second and click that like button and if you'd like to learn more about me or my company, head over to lawrencesystems.com. If you'd like to hire a short project, there's a hires button right at the top. If you'd like to help keep this channel sponsor free, and thank you to everyone who already has, there is a join button here for YouTube and a Patreon page. Your support is greatly appreciated. If you're looking for deals or discounts on products and services we offer on this channel, check out the affiliate links down below. They're in the description of all of our videos, including a link to our shirt store. We have a wide variety of shirts that we sell and new designs come out, well, randomly, so check back frequently. And finally, our forums. Forums.lawrencesystems.com is where you can have a more in-depth discussion about this video and other tech topics you've seen on this channel. Now back to our content. So product costs, we do see the 199 down here. And that is something I wanna make sure that's read really well here because it seems to be a common question. The Unify Protect is required to run this product with full functionality. We recommend using it with Unify Dream Machine, Unify Protect Network Video Recorder. We're gonna be using a Unify Network video recorder for this, but I just want to make sure that's a clear upfront prerequisite. This is not a just a 199 device. It's 199 as long as you already have the other devices that run Protect. I just want to make sure that is uh, upfront on there for people thinking this is a better price than some of the competitors out there. I don't think the price is unreasonable. I just want to make sure people understand you can't just get this. But it is IPS rated, built in display, so you can actually chat back and forth on the display. We'll show how that works. Real time two way audio with echo cancellation. Yes, it does have a microphone and speaker built in. Motion detection, weather resistant, and of course the Unify Protect integration. We jump over here to the data sheet, and you can see the IPX rating is IPX4, uh, mount materials, polycarbonate viewing angles, all the little details are in here. And yes, it does have a built-in IR, LED elimination. So it does have night vision essentially, so you can see someone in the dark with it. Uh, resolution of 1600, 1200 and 30 frames a second. And down through here, we have the specs like the Wi-Fi, uh, the factory reset button. There's really not much else to it. There's pretty much, it's a basic setup. Now, the advantage right off the bat here though with Unify Protect is going to be it stores everything locally. This is a niche ubiquities kind of, you know, work themselves into of providing a device that offers local storage as opposed to cloud storage and it also means there's not a subscription fee attached to it. So when I say back to the cost besides having the Protect device to store it on in the camera, well that's it. You don't have to pay monthly forever for the device but you are still able to get notifications sent to your phone. You're able to have two-way communications over your phone. So when you're not at home and someone rings the doorbell, you can still have that conversation. So you still get that feature of while you're at home or while you're away, they don't know who's ever ringing the doorbell because you're able to interact with them, but now you don't have to pay a subscription fee for that service. That's, I think, the real big advantage they have over a lot of the other ones out there. Now, as far as what comes in the box, there's a, I will show them physically, but I'll also just list it out here because I've already misplaced this little push pin here. Um, no big deal. Don't worry, you can get this off just with an ink pen. But it comes with some screws. It comes with a couple anchors. And this right here, and it has instructions how to do this, is it will not only ring your phone, but if you have a chime in your house, it has that option to actually ring the old style chime. Now they, in the instructions, they tell you to cut the power off definitely do that. Don't electrocute yourself. And here's your two different install options. One of them is just with the transformer, which is what we're going to be doing. I don't happen to have a chime. So that's what this one over here. And if you do have a chime, they got this little device that you add on there. So it will ring the chime as well. Then they go through and they have the installation instructions, how to set this up. And they made these nice little connectors. I'll show you when we're hooking it up. That made it really easy to do uh, for plugging the wires in. So you can screw the wires right down to the screws on the back of this, but um, you can also use these little push connectors, which I chose to use because it just looks nicer and a little bit cleaner. And that's these right here as shown 
is how we're going to be hooking it up. And this is, you know, all the stuff that's included in there. Now, they also have a little spirit level that comes on there, so you can level it when you're doing this. So if you're not, you know, you don't have a level handy, nice thing is that's built in. They tell you what type of drill to use, put it in, peel off the spirit level because it pops off. It's just not a sticky. And it also has this thing called the wedge. And the wedge is so you can, instead of having it straight head on, it can be at a little bit of an angle because maybe that's more convenient for how you want to mount things. And then once again, they show same installation, but doing it with the little wedge essentially of putting it on there. And I like at the end, turn the power back on. That's an important thing because if you're sitting there going, why is it dead? Well, you do have to power it back on. That's a good step to leave in there. Turn on device. Now, as far as uh, setup, we are gonna walk through that. I disconnected this from our network, so I'm gonna walk you through how it sets up, which is actually really easy. Um, they made that part intuitive, so you don't have to be very technical to set this up. But one more prerequisite, you already have the unified protect system. And I just happen to have like a Cloud Key Gen 2 Plus in my hand here, but you have to have the Protect system. We'll be using the one back here, set up and configured on the same network that the Wi-Fi that this is going on is on. That's an important aspect of it because if you put this on a different network, well, you may end up with problems. So I do recommend putting it on the same network. Uh, and it's pretty easy to do. We'll walk you through the steps on how to get that going. All right, so now let's plug it in and go through the setup on this. Now, a quick note about how I'm powering this is we ran over to the hardware store and picked up a transformer for a doorbell. I didn't happen to have one on my building already, and this is not PoE. It is a Wi-Fi only. I wish it did have a network option. Uh, maybe a future version will, but right now, this is what we have available. So uh, let's go into the app and show you how the setup works now that we have it all powered up. Now, the device is ready to be set up, and as soon as I opened up the app and connected to my NVR, it said, hey, look, I found a new device, a doorbell camera. So we're gonna go ahead and click Add, select the camera, set up cameras, Connecting the camera. Locating networks. And it does this all over Bluetooth, by the way. Paste in the Wi-Fi password. And connecting to Wi-Fi. It's really straightforward on the setup. It's gonna take a second here to establish and it'll join to our network in momentarily. Setup complete. Pretty fast. Now we have the device. We can name it. We can install it with or without Chimebox. We're going to choose without. And there's me looking at the camera. You can wave to it. I can see it. Actually, I'll face it this way now. And uh, from here, we're going to actually show you how we have notifications show up on it and uh, what they look like. So. You can see it by looking up close. You see the little display. We have that. Go back to the overhead. And now I can have a conversation. And we'll move this outside where we can get a better view, but it's going to start looping because now I'm talking on both. We'll actually set this back down and also show you. Stop talking and we'll press the text button here and we can say, hello, YouTube. And you can see whatever we pipe here. We have test save custom message and you can just type a custom message whatever you want and send it and those will just display right across there and that notification as you notice will actually swipe this down comes across the top of my phone so when I press this there we go it says there's a doorbell and lets me have a notice there. And we can swipe it back down. This comes up across the top of the phone. Pretty simple. So we're going to go ahead and stick this outside so we can get a little bit closer look. But first, let's take one more close look at the back of this uh, to show you how the hookups look. So it's really basic. It's just these two wires. Like I said, they got these little push in there. And this is nice. I mean, you can run the wires direct and screw them down, but this is much cleaner the way they offer this. And the same thing with the hardware they provide, which is this device here. For hooking it up to your chime if you have one same little push end connectors now just to take one quick look though at the wedge and how this actually goes on so we have this part here so it's going to set flat oh by the way it does have a light which is not particularly useful in my opinion it's not very bright it faces down kind of illuminate your porch but it does have the IR inside of here, so it will illuminate with the night vision. So this is not part of you know any night vision, that's all built in right here. But the wedge is in case your door 
isn't necessarily right next to it. Maybe it's offset and you want it to face more towards your door. That's where it has the wedge. This is the other backing that you can use. This is one we are gonna be using. We're gonna doing a flush mount. And this is a comment I will have about it. Now, first watch what happens when I power it down. It will do a countdown. So we're gonna pop this out, shutting down. And the nice thing about this, while it's shutting down, I still have a video feed. And the reason that's important, I'm gonna make evident to you. So shutting down is what happens when it goes to the power off. And uh, so we unplugged it, it's powered off, but there was, you know, about a five second countdown. And I think that's important because one thing I noticed about these cameras, and I don't know how much this is an issue. And also I noticed, if you noticed in the beginning, I mentioned, I don't know where the little push pin is. Don't worry, I don't need it because all you need is a Lawrence system ink pen or one of equivalent size and that little tab that snapped in here. And you can open this up. My thought and why I don't know if this is a real problem or not is, wow, that was easy. So if this is mounted and someone wants a doorbell, uh, they can press the tiny little button in there and just remove the doorbell. But because there's a battery in there, it's last few moments would be hopefully someone running and looking at it themselves. Um, they go through and now you have some type of evidence while they're running across the yard with your doorbell um, until it comes either out of Wi-Fi range or that four second countdown comes down. So I would recommend if you install one of these and you are worried about that scenario that after you put this on wherever you're going to mount it to that you cover this little bottom piece. So where it's mounted flush to the door, putting any little thing, it can be even some type of screw that goes underneath just to block access to that if you don't, you know, are worried about it easily coming off. Um, I don't know how much of a concern it is, but it's something I thought I'd mention anyways. All right, let's go ahead and get this hooked up outside so we can get a better view of the video and understand it a little bit deeper. All right, I have the doorbell temporarily mounted. This is arm's length away. There's cars driving around. And this video is directly from the doorbell. I'm doing it outside so you can understand the microphone, understand how it works. Maybe you hear an ambulance in the background, but it works. This is the recording audio. And let me stand about this far away, which would probably really not sound as good as if I was this close to it. And you figure people are this close to your door. And I also wanted to make sure there's plenty of ambient noise so you can see the camera, understand the ambient noise and see just how wide angle it is when I'm standing about arm's length away. So as I said, that video was right from the doorbell and I think you can hear people standing in front of the doorbell quite well. The microphone picks up good, even with the ambient noise and an ambulance going by, it's still pretty good quality for both the video and audio, really nice wide angle. The downside is the other person, when you're using your phone to talk back to them, if there's a lot of noise going on, it's hard to hear. Uh, and of course we're on a main street, so there's a lot of traffic, but it's not particularly loud. So that's one downside of it. They don't have a very big speaker on there. So just keep that in mind. But of course, if you could, if you could just articulate, read the screen and send them a message, like, you know, leave package at the door or whatever, I think you've pretty much reached the goal. But I'll at least comment that, yeah, it was not easy to hear when my staff was trying to talk to me over the phone um, getting back. So that's that's one downside I have found about this. I don't know if that can be fixed. I don't know if they can adjust that in firmware and make it a little bit louder, but either way, that's the way it is. Now, inside of Unify Protect is the last piece we're gonna cover. And this is really cool. Inside of here, it's treated just like a regular camera. Uh, we have the ability to have status sounds on or off inside of here when you're changing the settings, uh, have the time overlaid, the camera name overlaid, recording options, motion events, uh, when to record always, or maybe we only record on a motion event like that. So it's just like any other unified camera. It also supports motion zones. So if we had the street, for example, whoop, grab it over here and we'll move this down. So maybe we want to create only a zone where this is in view, but not people in the street. So we know when people are coming up, but not that. These are some abilities you have to fine tune the motion of where, and you can add multiple zones where you want it to capture. And this can be important, especially if you are on a busy street where you don't want every car going by to create a motion event because it makes it harder to find things. The time-lapse feature, which is part of uh, the Unify system. So we'll go over here and we'll go a camera that has more time-lapse video on it. And what time-lapse means is not necessarily a time-lapse as much as a way to quickly jump through 
and see times when people came and went and packages when they're moving so you can jump to an area in the video. I like this feature quite a bit and the camera, once again, is supported on there. So go back over to the camera device, go to the door here. And finally, I will mention they have the ability to set up RTSP stream. So if you wanted to export to something else, but no, it does not support other more standard protocols. The only options are these RTSP streams or using it inside the Unify Protect system. That's really it. Then we have the option to reboot, uh, disable the chime if you had a chime on there and disable the microphone, which would completely defeat the purpose of this. So I'd probably recommend leaving the microphone enabled. Final last thing I will mention is the magic video tube, which is how we display things that are behind us. Now, the magic video tube, I've done a video on this before, and we can go here and we're gonna create a view. So we go to live view and we're going to edit this view. Save. And now we have a live view that's for the doorbell cam. So that will go back over here and go back to the UFP viewport. Next, I got a separate review I've done of this, and then we can change it to that. And now when we look behind me, the TV that's got that hooked up is now displaying the viewport. So that's actually a nice feature because it's once again treated like any other camera on the Unify system. I can add it to my you know constant running display of camera views so I can see who's at the door. So if you wanted to put a monitor up there, you can leave the front porch monitor along with any other Unify cameras in your Protect system and put them all on there. So I think that's a pretty cool feature overall. And uh, the Unify viewport, I know people thought, well, once again, it's another kind of expensive device at 199 but compared to some of the other commercial options out there i'm going to say it's uh, pretty reasonably priced so once again when you start building this all out as one big ecosystem and you've already got the unified protect device you've already got the mbr you've already got you know so many of these unified cameras it's kind of like well if you're going to have a doorbell you may as well get the unified one and complete the ecosystem now i've done a separate review of the overall protect ecosystem and i over overall i'm going to say it's one of the easiest ones to use and i've handful of the ones especially when you look at the commercial ones granted you're going to start getting exponentially more features but those often come with subscriptions more expensive licensing fees and this whole system doesn't so adding more cameras is as simple as buying more devices and adding more doorbells is as simple as buying more doorbells and you can put a few of them out there maybe you have more than one entrance you want to cover and it's not sending it to the cloud so you're able to you know have it all stored locally all the videos local it's easy to download the video and find the clip you're looking for and you know save it for whatever reasons you want. But like I said, pretty neat system. You can get it all on Unify's site. I believe it's all out of stock right now, but when it's in stock, keep checking back um, and they'll have them available. I don't know when they're coming to Amazon. Um, when stuff's really new, it takes a while sometimes to trickle down to get over there. Thanks. And thank you for making it to the end of the video. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you'd like to see more content from the channel, hit the subscribe button and hit the bell icon if you like YouTube to notify you when new videos come out. If you'd like to hire us, head over to lawrencesystems.com, fill out our contact page, and let us know what we can help you with and what projects you'd like us to work together on. If you want to carry on the discussion, head over to forums.lawrencesystems.com where we can carry on the discussion about this video, other videos, or other tech topics in general, even suggestions for new videos. They're accepted right there on our forums, which are free. Also, if you'd like to help the channel out in other ways, head over to our affiliate page. We have a lot of great tech offers for you. And once again, thanks for watching and see you next time.